Here at Cognitive Effects, we specialize in treating post-concussion syndrome as well as other long-term chronic effects of traumatic brain injury. I am Dr. Alina Fong. I'm a clinical neuropsychologist and a co-founder here at Cognitive Effects. In this video today, we are going to discuss how you are not alone and how science actually shows that you are not in this miserable minority, but actually in the majority. We're also going to discuss some of the common symptoms that you might be experiencing and how those symptoms can actually play a role in your time to recovery. So to set the stage, there has been some research that has been cited ad nauseum from the mid 90s that characterizes or attempts to characterize these patients that are struggling with long-term traumatic brain injury issues. This term miserable minority was actually coined at that point in time, I think it was about 1994, stating that their research showed that most patients recover and that only about five to 15% of patients with concussion continue to have ongoing symptoms. Well, current data shows that this is completely wrong. In fact, a few years ago, a seminal study was released that actually showed that upwards of 55% of patients with concussion can have lingering symptoms. But the study that I wanna talk about today was actually the first longitudinal study specifically for PCS or post-concussion syndrome patients that actually looked at these patients long-term and can actually talk about the symptoms that they were having and how that related to their recovery time. One of the most important findings in this study actually showed that only 27% of the respondents reported improvement and recovery. That means 73% of these patients did not get better. Now that does not sound like a miserable minority to me, that sounds like a miserable majority. Now when these 73% of patients were asked what symptoms they were still struggling with, you might be surprised to find out what these symptoms were. Now, right here, we can actually see that the five most common symptoms are headache, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, brain fog, and head pressure or headache, pressure in the head. Almost 70% of patients reported a headache. About 65% of patients reported difficulty concentrating and about 53% of patients reported this ongoing fatigue. What I also wanna point out is some of the most common assumed symptoms of concussion like nausea, vomiting, those are actually way down here at the very end of the graph, just showing that in actuality, nausea and vomiting happens in very, very, very few of these cases. So in other words, the nature of the symptom, whether it's more physical or more cognitive or more sleep related or even more emotional, actually did not have any significant bearing on how that patient's uh, reported these symptoms or really the prevalence of these symptoms. So these symptoms can be equally felt by, by these patients um, and they don't cluster in certain subcategories. So now that we've actually looked at all the symptoms that were recorded and that these patients reported, which actually equal 35. Let's look at what the number of symptoms can actually mean. These researchers broke down the number of symptoms the patients had and compared that to their recovery. What this graph here shows is that the type of symptom may not matter as much as the number of total symptoms that you have. So for example, these researchers showed that for the patients that only reported one or two of these 35 symptoms, they had the greatest chance of recovery. However, for patients that experience eight or more symptoms, your chances of recovery were much, much lower. In fact, if you reported half of these, so maybe 17 or more symptoms, you had almost a 100% chance of not recovering. Now, if you're sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I do have eight or more of these symptoms, you are not alone. That is the theme of this, you are not alone. 74% of patients had at least eight of these symptoms. Now, the last and probably most important part of their study is shown in this last graph here. What this graph shows is the time it took to recover compared to how much recovery there was. Now, I want to show you very clearly here that 
The black parts of this graph represent patients who have recovered, but the red represents all the patients who have not recovered. Remember that 73%. Now, what is very interesting here is that there is a breakdown right at about the one year mark. What they show is that if you have been struggling with your concussions at this one year mark, the chances of you recovering on your own are slim to none. And importantly, if you are three years out from your recovery, none of their respondents reported recovery. Now, this is showing those 23% that did recover, but I want to actually talk specifically about timing here. I think that these researchers knew PCS and they divided these timings up in strategic chunks. This three to six month mark is actually the point where you get diagnosed with PCS. If you have been struggling with your concussion symptoms and you haven't reached a three month mark, you would actually not be considered PCS. You don't meet that diagnostic criteria. You have to be struggling for at least three months, usually three to six months. Now, the reason why this is also important is again, we here at CFX focus on these patients that have been struggling with PCS for now often years. And what we find is it's after this three to six month point that the medical community kind of drops the ball. Usually at this point, many of my patients will say that they feel a bit abandoned by their doctors and, and those in the medical community. Often at this point in time, they are prescribed psychiatric medications and uh, have been suggested that maybe this is psychological. Uh, these patients no longer uh, qualify for different types of therapies or at this point they feel like they've tried a lot of the therapies. So it is really important to note that you know, most of the time around the six to 12 month range, yes, there's still improvement to be had, uh, but once you get to about the year mark, you start to see huge jumps in the patient percentages of patients that are not recovered. Now, do not despair. The reason that this is so important to me is because again, most of the patients that come to us start right here at this two to three year mark, right when it seems like all hope is lost, but that's not the case. We are a clinic that specializes in these PCS cases. Now, this doesn't say that you're never going to recover, but the study did say that these patients would not recover on their own. If you're one of these patients that are in this range, we are here to help. You can book a complimentary consultation. We can walk you through your symptoms and show you that you are absolutely not alone. There is a study that comprised all of this data to show you that you may be one of these 73% in this majority, and we are here to help.